Hi, I'm Mike Allen, and my course, John Webster Among the Theologians, be seeking to introduce you to the theology and writings of the late professor John Webster, and essentially to train you so that you can confidently and competently read him for yourself. In doing so, uh, we're going to study the breadth of his work and the development of his thinking over the decades, as well as trying to trace some major connections and uh, synthetic thread lines that run through his work, various formal methodological principles, as well as some material judgments about the nature of Christian theology. One of the great things about reading Webster is that in learning to read him more carefully, we're actually formed to read others because he interacted at times polemically with other theologians uh, in the contemporary scene, but especially patiently with theologians from the tradition. Uh, first with Eberhard Jungel and Karl Barth in his earlier historical work, and then later much more broadly as he ranged lovingly across not just the canon of Holy Scripture, but the patristic medieval, reformational, and modern heritage of the practice of Christian theology. So in learning to read and think with Webster, we are guided uh, to learn and think with so many theologians across the ages. Uh, and we'll explore that as we consider the way in which he theologizes and the nature of his theological principles. Webster has been heralded, rightly, I think, as one of the most significant contemporary theologians. I'll try and explain why people have been so appreciative and how he's had influence. At the same time, I think much of Webster's project has gone underappreciated or, in fact, uh, been mistaken in certain respects. You hear this in a variety of ways. Uh, the way in which he turned away from Karl Barth or turned into a Thomist of some sort. We'll describe a number of ways in which his theology does develop and both his rhetoric and some of his material judgments do shift over time. Uh, but I ultimately want to point you to a number of texts early and late that will evidence some consistent judgments about what it means to do the work of theology in the light of the Christian gospel. What it means that the gospel is, as he puts it, not just the content, but also the context for our doing of theology. And so doing, uh, yes, he ceased to write book-length treatments of Karl Barth, but what he found most moving in Barth, the idea of going to school exegetically and historically, that stayed with him to the very end. And what he found compelling in Thomas and Turretin in Basel and Augustine and Cassian and Bernard and Owen and Maastricht and Bavinck, all of those things express in various registers judgments that in most respects were there from the beginning. And as he went to school, as he developed wider facility in the Christian tradition, he was able to nuance and extend and rephrase and reorganize the way in which he would commend some fairly consistent theological judgments. So in this course, we'll be reading across his corpus, but I'll be trying to emphasize and exposit and analyze some oft unappreciated texts. His early texts on the culture of theology, where he lays out the fullest vision of his theological method and its practical implications over and against the modern academy. And then his uh, as yet unpublished concert lectures, the closest thing to a mini summa or a mini systematic theology where we see his mature thought, written in 2007, um, regarding how to study the perfect life of God and the works of God in light of that perfection. In light of that, we'll then run through a, a host of essays and other lectures, seeking to understand the way in which he does theology, as well as the particular doctrinal judgments he makes. I want to commend to you the study of Webster, and in studying Webster, the study of many other Christian theologians, and in studying them, the study of Holy Scripture, which is living and active and continues to be used by the risen Christ uh, as a tool to guide, to equip, to kill and make new, to render the promises of the gospel for his people in a new day and age. I'd invite you to join me in that study. Thank you.